What's up guys, it's Brent back here, and we are going to do another Dungeon Filler episode. So, last time we did Beholders, uh, first episode, we were trying to you know, get a feel for how to be doing this series and what would be going on next. And I may have mentioned it, if I didn't mention it in the video, I mentioned it in the vlog this morning, um, what the monster we are going to do today. Uh, Volo's Guide goes into, Volo's Guide right here. Uh, after Beholders, it goes into Giants. Discusses a little bit more of the lore about them, some of the different things about them. So, we're going to go into Giants, but I think one of the mistakes I made with Beholders is I tried to do it all in a huge group. I, the goal of the series is to make shorter, you know, entries about the monster. Not too much lore, enough where you get a feel for them, and if you know if you want to use them as a monster in your campaign. So today we are going to go into Giants, specifically Cloud Giants. So, let's go into it. Alright, so what are Cloud Giants? Cloud Giants are one of the stronger Giants, only to be rivaled by the Storm Giant. They are the second strongest out of all of them. And because of the Storm Giants like to be solitary, the Cloud Giants actually think themselves the strongest, even though we know that's not the case. Cloud Giants, as their name would say, roll over the clouds and they make their homes inside of solid clouds or high mountains, depending on what they may find. As part of their name, they have dominion over air, as it would be, being able to form clouds and billowing fogs uh, as part of their magic. Cloud Giants don't usually form into large clans, instead would settle for smaller family dynamics however in times of like great hardship they are known to form together to create larger clans to solve whatever problems they might be having so these cloud giants to show their status as they would instead of just collecting and hoarding valuable objects and items they will take and use these items to craft things that they may be able to wear or decorate their house in they see more value in showing their status than just hoarding up all their treasure. So, you know, 300 gold pieces worth of, you know, solid coins is less valuable to them than a nice necklace that's worth a thousand gold pieces. They value the crafted item more than just the solid material, as it would be. Additionally, cloud giants are more civilized than the other kind of giants. Um, it reflects in their charisma when we look at that a little later. And instead of fighting each other or trying to steal each other's treasure, they would rather uh, gamble it in games of high chance. And the kind of games they like to play are ones that they don't have a lot of control over. So these games might be uh, games like varying games of chance. Uh, a lot of times they will bet on lesser uh, he, like lesser races, lesser humans, um, ones that they don't find you know as worthy, and so they might bet on little Timmy, uh, who might not be little. I don't know why I call him that. Uh, might be able to outrun a lion, or if Jarrett will find his way out of their endless hedge mage, uh, stuff that they can't really control to add another f like high risk factor. They would rather do high risk, high reward, and a lot of times during these games of chance and these gamblings the giant can actually lose a grand fortune or a lot of their monetary wealth that they might have been saving up. So as I said earlier, cloud giants are known to live on solid clouds, which are pretty much just a cloud that is solid, and they will build high castles there. That is the preferred area to live in. They will also settle for high mountains, but they like to be very high up. In these castles that they build, these grand castles, they like to have an extraordinary garden. And these gardens are a little different from normal gardens. They produce giant-sized fruits and vegetables. So you could have, you know, grapes as big as your head, pumpkins the size of, like, small carriages, stuff like this. And they really, really, really treasure their gardens. These gardens are so valuable to them that they will keep pets to guard them over the night when they might not be able to watch them. Some of these pets are peritons, wyverns, Hourbells and lions. They will roam the grounds and protect their stuff when they might be away. Alright, so now we're going to go into some of the stats to see if a cloud giant might fit the encounter you're thinking about. 
All right, so now to get into the stats of this creature so you know if you'd like to use it in your campaign or whatever encounter you might have planned. Cloud Giants are size huge creatures. They're giants, so that makes a lot of sense. And their alignment is 50-50, good, neutral good or neutral evil. I think this is a very interesting tidbit because on the left side, a little lower on the scale than them are Fire Giants, which are lawful evil. And then right above them on the scale are Storm Giants, which are chaotic good. So they are either good or bad, uh, and then neutral, as it says. So I think that's a little interesting. You can kind of place them in whatever role you might have. Their AC is pretty low at a 14. Uh, they're giants, so they're pretty big targets, which makes a lot of sense. And if you are planning an encounter where you might need them to have a higher AC, you always could, you know, say they augmented it with armor or a shield. Keep your players guessing a little bit. You know, make the fight last a little longer or make them harder to hit. They have a pretty good range of health that they can have. On the lowest end, it's recommended 112, and on the top, 288, with the average in the middle being 200 for these. So these giants have no negative stats. Strength of 27, dexterity 10, constitution 22, intelligence 12, wisdom 16, and charisma 16. Now to go through these stats and kind of talk a little, little bit more about them. So as you would expect, these giants are pretty strong, uh, plus 8 to their strength. And interesting enough, they're not very dexterous with a plus 0. Uh, I think that's reflected well in their AC with it being surprisingly low. Um, however... I still think they would have a positive one, in my opinion. They might be, you know, bigger moving targets, but they also have a running speed of 40. So I can't imagine they're, you know, middle of the line. But that's what the Monster Manual says. And a lot of times, they're ranked up against different creatures. Makes sense. You can't make everything incredibly powerful. And Dexterity is their lowest stat. They have a constitution of plus 6, indicative of how big they are and how hardy they are. Their intelligence is at a plus one, which actually really shows their evolved status and how more civilized and, you know, kind of shows that intelligence, unlike a hill giant who has a minus three to their intelligence. They are fairly wise with a plus three, uh, which will give them the ability to be harder to control or charm. And finally, their charisma is a plus three, which really shows that they're civil and actually can be talked to instead of them just right out attacking you immediately. Um, they would actually probably be willing to have a conversation and their high charisma is reflected later in their innate magic capabilities. Their saving throw is constitution plus nine, wisdom plus seven, and charisma plus seven. Uh, some of their skills are insight plus seven, uh, which kind of makes sense. They like to gamble and play games of chance. And in their eyes, being they would rather lose the game and lose all of the wealth they have than try to cheat and, you know, be a cheater. Uh, it's represented to the god they follow. So being able to see through other people's deceit and cheating them in a game uh, makes a lot of sense. Get a plus 7 to perception. Uh, checks. Passive of 17. They also have keen smell, which allows them advantage on any perception checks that rely on smell. All right, so let's get into... The spell the giant knows and the, the actions it can do normally from the book. So like I said, they are natural spellcasters or innate spellcasters using charisma as their spellcasting ability. Uh, the spells that they know at will, they can do detect magic, fog cloud, and light. Uh, the fog cloud makes a lot of sense. Like I said earlier in their lore and some of the information about them, they have the ability to make thick fogs and mist and, you know, clouds out of almost nothing so makes sense all right three times a day they can cast fly feather fall misty step and telekinesis i think it means three times out of this less so you can do one of each three times each one um as you say they have three slots for these i think fly is a very solid choice these giants live up in the clouds or high mountains it allows them to be able to have a higher mobility in their environment they might be able to circumvent your barbarian from hitting them or knock a flying creature out of the air when hunting. It's a very useful spell and could make change the way an encounter flows in a lot of different ways. Uh, especially if there are more than one giant being able to, you know, dog team one person at different angles. Helps a lot. Featherfall, this is just in case, you know, someone knocks your con knocks you uh, knocks your concentration out. That's what I'm trying to go for. 
uh, and you fall out. You might cast Feather Fall as a reaction to save yourself. Misty Step, I think, is really good. But especially with having like a considered low dex, I think this augments that ability to move around the battlefield and really, you know, get up next to someone who might be trying to get away and clobber them. Like, Misty Step and having those high distance move spells, I think is really good. And then finally, Telekinesis could be used to hold her bol hurl boulders, uh, you know, hold someone, crush. I think it's a very good one. It's also a very high level spell that I think has a lot of applications rather than just straight up damage. It has a lot of very interesting things it can be used for on like a control and support kind of level. And finally, once a day, they can do control weather, high, high level spell, or gaseous form. So I think it has a very round set of spells it knows. Not just, you know, the typical offensive spells, but a lot of other kind of support spells. All right. So when it's not spell casting, it has two other actions that it can standardly do. It can make a multi-attack with a morning star with the max damage on this being 32 and on the low end 11. And the other attack it can do is it has a ranged rock attack, which is pretty much just picking up something and throwing it. I think it's interesting that they, it just calls it rock in the book. You think it'd be like hurl rock, but it's just called rock. Um, and in, when I play, I play a giant ape. Well, I play a wizard who can polymorph into a giant ape in one of my campaigns. And we use pretty much the rock is just making a ranged spell attack with an improvised weapon. Um, we give it the same damage. Because it's hard if you're not in the environment that you're supposed to be in to have just, you know, round made boulders perfectly sitting there all the time. So the max on that one is 48 and the minimum is 12. Alright, so there are many ways you can use this to make and craft different encounters. One of these ways can be that the giant has a, you know, cloud top castle, per se. And say you're group is tasked to secure and locate a magic item that he has as part of his collection, steal it, and bring it back to this person. This allows for you have to find it first. Uh, it's a class castle in the clouds. It might not be easy to see, but I bet it also blends in pretty well. They have to either, probably stealthily, depending on the level uh, of the characters you have, uh, you could do it two ways. They, you could force them to be stealthily, having the cloud giant you know, very much outrank them in the level that they would need to encounter it. So trying to make them extra defensive. Also, then you could allow, you know, the pets to do more of the fighting and the cloud giant to be this ominous character that really defends the manor and, you know, puts the fear into your characters. Or you could have them have to fight it and try to take the whole horde. Uh, depending on which way you do it depends on how much reward the characters will get by trying to kill the cloud giant. But having him there as a stronger force might deter them from trying to take the castle. And then you have to deal with now your characters have a floating castle and have you know the whole horde of magic items that a cloud giant. Blah blah. It, it can lead to some interesting stuff depending on what level the characters are at. Uh, you can have your the cloud giants be attacking maybe say a mountainside town. Uh, some tragedy happened up in their castle, and now because of this, they are having to leave the area and move into a new home lower down the mountain. It gives the idea to either fight a horde, well, I wouldn't say a horde, a family of cloud giants, which would be a pretty high-level encounter, or to, you know, rely on the giant's ability to communicate and their understanding and reasoning to reason with them and actually go up to the castle and figure out what the problem is. You can have the giant actually aid the party in taking out a bigger, stronger creature. Gives them a little bit of a, you know, back and forth kind of thing. And finally, uh, cloud giants are pretty smart. So an, another interesting way to use them would be to make them an NPC. You have them find this cloud giant, a nice, you know, leaning on the 50% good, uh, and the party could go to the castle and either take quests from the giant, you know, they like riches, they like things, uh, especially ones that they could hang up as trophies. So the giant could maybe task them to do a quest for him to bring him something. Or you could use it as a simple NPC that the player could bring items to that the cloud giant might like. They could sell it for gold or for trade for magic items that the giant might have. Either way, with having the giant be 50-50 on good or evil, you can really plug them into a lot of roles as antagonists or villains in the story or the encounter, or good guys that your characters might be able to befriend 
and have a very interesting and very, you know, powerful ally that they can use later in the campaign. But anyways, guys, that's been Cloud Giants. We actually talked a lot more, but I think I had a lot of good information to give you guys. I hope this helps you when planning out your next encounter. All right, guys, if you did enjoy, hit the like button. helps me out a lot. Let me know who's watching. I've been watching the view count on these videos. Uh, so, uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. It shows me that I should continue making these. And I have a lot of fun making them. So, I'd love to see that. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'm going to try to put these out on a weekly basis. We'll see how that goes. It's a lot of script writing. Uh, trying to become more structured at it. But if you do... I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.